Bumps and bruises, scratches and scrapes, some of the ingredients that a good life makes. But sorrows become success, and as we aim for the top, we will pause if we must, but we will never stop. Welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. Hello there and welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. This is a safe space to share your stories. Tonight we are talking to Olympic and world champion, Sharika Jackson. What I can tell you is that this young lady is the epitome of strength and grace, even though she silently battled several issues, almost at one stage buckling before she got the help that she needed. Today, she is in a happier space and place. I'm honored to have her in our safe space today. Sherry Ka, thank you for being here. Thank you for I'm not me. running away. <laughs> <laughs> you're nervous. A little bit. What are you nervous for? <laughs> tell me what you're nervous for. Ah. I'm a person who I always had this wall up. Yes. So I'm kind of nervous. Like normally I'm comfortable on the track. I don't get that nervous. But today I'm a little nervous. Thank you for admitting that. That's okay. We all get nervous, right? Okay. I'm Definitely. curious about that wall though. The wall. <sighs> you seem to be scaling the wall from the other day. And I see you're trying to like let loose a little more and lean into yourself a little more. But that wall is coming from... From the little girl in St. Anne? Yes. So, I think I had this wall up from when I was a child. So, I think it's kind of hard. I got a little bit of help, so I'm not so... The wall is coming down mm -hmm. a little bit, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the wall and how you're managing to get around or get over um, the wall. Um, tell me a little bit about your life growing up um, St. Anne. Manchester, Clarendon, all stomping grounds for you at some point in your life and, and played a part in making you the lovely young lady you are today. <laughs> what was childhood like for you? Um, it was rough, you know, I've, I have moved around so much. I think it was really, really rough. I was born in St. Anne where I lived in Hyattsfield for some time. And then I moved to Boxfield, where I attend from Grove Basic School. Mm -hmm. So after leaving um, Basic School, I went to Manchester to live with my grandma, where I attend Robins Hall, Ollidge and Junior High. When I was in, when I was going in fourth grade, I moved back to St. Anne, where I live with my father. And then after primary school because I went to Ocheres Primary. I then went to Vertec, no, Steertown Primary and Junior High. And then I moved to Vertec Technical High School where I spent most of my days. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of moving around. Yes. So you were kind of, you settled here and then you move and you have to settle there. And so I, never, I, I didn't have the childhood where I be having fun and I was all over the place, you know, so I don't think I get to enjoy mm -hmm. the childhood I would, that would I, I would have hoped to mm -hmm. um, enjoy. But mm -hmm. And I is that what kind of made you this kind of steeled? Because when I ask you how you describe yourself, you, see, you said that you, you self-describe as aggressive. Very. You know? so, so was that a part of how that persona came to be? Um, yes, because I, f I felt like I never had enough to like be a child. I felt Gosh. like I was older than a child moving around, being here for a little while, there for a little while. So I believe that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. I'm very, very aggressive. Mm 
You so even today you can say you're very very aggressive. Yes. <laughs> With a big smile, I'm very very aggressive. How does that usually play out? How does um, it? it plays out good sometimes and bad because mm -hmm. I think if you see me and don't know me personally, you not want to approach me. Most of my friends, I think, mm -hmm. they are afraid of me, but. <laughs> Then I have some of my friends that will keep me grounded and like, look, you're wrong. And I'm like, okay. And I have my little time where I take my little time and then I probably admit I'm wrong or sometimes I don't admit I'm wrong. But um, I think it's good and it's bad, but now I'm in a better space where I'm not so aggressive. Mm -hmm. I can be, but I am, think I'm a better grown up now. We saw this viral video of you when you were at school talking about who you wanted to be on the track and field. Well, first of all, how did you feel when you looked back at that? Because I've, I've watched you watching yourself running races and you get completely emotional. When you look back at that before you even tasted any of this <laughs> and heard yourself talking about what you wanted to be. In life, I want to pursue a career in track and field. So I just work in to accomplish all my goals. When I go there, I compete to the best of my ability. I always want to um, bring home a medal and say, all right, I want to make my family and my coach and Jamaica proud. I know you sit here and look at that little girl. When I saw the video, I didn't even like watch most of it because there was a video before. Like there was, I think, I don't remember her name, Cherie. Like she did a video like, oh, sign this interview. So when you get big, you remember me. So when I saw that video with me doing that interview, I was like, this is something I manifested, even though at the time, you know, I really wanted to do a lot. But then track and field was my thing where I used to calm how I felt. And it occupies my mind, even in high school. So when I saw the video, I took some time and then I watched it and I was like, Ah, I'm right there, you know. I've always manifested what I wanted to achieve and I'm getting there slowly. And I, I think it's really good. I, I mm -hmm. just enjoy watching me being like, it's something I've dreamt about and I'm living the dream and mm -hmm. enjoying it. Has that aggression served you? Because when you look at that little girl and look at where you are now, we're going to talk about some of the barriers you had along the way, including a lot of naysayers. Are you glad that you had that spirit of aggression? Is that I'm, what helped you get to where you are? Um, definitely. It's something where I think a lot of persons told me back then that I need to change the way how I approach <laughs> things. But <laughs> as I said, it was a barrier where I felt like I needed to protect myself. Mm -hmm. In that space, I don't think I had enough people in my corner just as being in a high school to say, okay, then they will protect me. So I felt like I was my own protector. So I think it really helps me a lot because I felt, I just felt too grown up for my age. Yes, ma'am. Copy that. Well, as things progressed, um, Cherica would start to live her dreams and then 2020 would come. <sighs> but she's still here. We'll talk about that <laughs> when we come back. We'll be right back. Hi guys, we are running right through with Mitch. Isn't that your saying? <laughs> She's here with us talking to us today, um, sharing some more uh, with us outside the track and off the track about her life and how she's come to be who she is today. Um, you said track was good for you because it, it obviously a God-given talent, but it also occupied a lot of your time and a lot yes. of your mind, so it never left room for a lot of other things. And then came COVID in 2020. 2020. And COVID gave you exactly what you did not want. Definitely. Which was time. Too much time. And silence. Yes. So all you had was <sighs> you and your thoughts. Too, too much. A little too much. Mm -hmm. I think COVID was very, very, a COVID year was really, really bad. Um... 2019, I got bronze at World Championship. And then when I started training, because I had this problem where my shins hurt so badly. Um, my physiotherapist keeps saying, you need to visit the doctor when you finish the season, because 2019 season was in, I think, October. So um, 
after the season finished, when I started training, I realized my shin started to bother me all over again. Mm -hmm. So I was like, no, I need to go to the doctor. So I got a recommendation and I went to do an X-ray where I had stress fractures on both of my legs, but the, the right one was very, very bad. And I was like, God, I know this is you, but it's Olympic year. So do I, what do I do? Um, mentally, I was in a good space, somewhat, because mm -hmm. you know, the <laughs> season was going. So therefore, in 2019, my mind was occupied. And then in 2020, when I did the X-ray, the 2019, the end part, I did the X-ray and I found out and I brought letter to coach and he was like, oh my, you have to be going in the pool for some time. Then COVID came, which I was like, okay then. At the time, they never postponed the Olympics. I was, my mind was already getting occupied, like, oh, what if I don't make the Olympic and everything. So everything was just rushing to my mind. Um, that year was the end of my contract year also, in 2019. So all of those pressure stuff started coming to my mind. And I was like, man, what do I do? Um, the injury took me out for a long period of time because I started training in, I think, in March. Because at the time, they never postponed the Olympic. And I was like, man, I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to make it. So everything started to mm -hmm. rush. And then they, there comes COVID where they postponed the Olympic and we had a shutdown. It was really, really bad for me. Mm -hmm. And I think I tried to enjoy it, but it was bad. I started... So many bad things happen because I would, I, I'm an overthinker. Yes, ma'am. So I overthink a lot. And I think for me personally, to de be dealing with that injury, to deal with me, because I never had a lot of purses around me. Deliberately so? Sometimes. I think um, at the time, I don't think me and my mother was in a good space. Gotcha. Me my friends, some of them not living in Kingston. I had a friend staying with. And she didn't even know, because I don't, honestly don't think my friends actually know how, well, some of my friends, or most of my friends, I don't think they know how much I struggle mentally. Come on, girl. Are you serious? Yes. I think out of all the friends, I am the strong one. And I don't think they know how much I struggle mentally. Even today, Sha? Yes. And... I am, a, as I said, I am, personally, I don't like letting in people yeah. in my mind or in how I feel in. Because I don't want anybody to say, oh, I feel sorry for her. No, I don't want Why? that. And Why? I think I've grown that way where how I wanted to express myself, I wasn't allowed to do so. I was all all around town as a child. So I don't think I had anybody personally in my space like that to say, okay, this is how I feel and they were like, okay, then I try to help me. So when 2020 came, mm -hmm. it was really, really rough because now I start to struggle more mentally. I remember when I went to a doctor, I think I was just getting a random checkup. And as I sat, sat in her office and she was like, you're okay. And I just started crying. Mm -hmm. I started crying so hard. She asked me if I was okay. And I said, yes. Because if, if you see me crying, you ask me if I'm okay, I'm going to say yes. Because I don't want to feel like, oh, I'm sorry for it. Nah, I don't like that. I think I'm strong. I'm very strong. You know, strong people cry. Did you know that? Do you know that being able to express your emotions is a part of strength? I don't know. Your therapist never tell you. She told me recently. Yeah. <laughs> she told me recently. And I segue to say that out of that visit with that doctor, she said to you, nope, you're not okay. You need to go and see somebody. And that's when you started doing therapy. Yes. And therapy is difficult. It was really difficult. She had, I think, she had a rough time with me. In the beginning. Were you kicking and screaming? I cried. I was just sitting in her office and I cried. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just crying. Because I, I was struggling mentally. Mm -hmm. I was depressed. Everything. 
I, these are issues of insecurity. It's the pressure of track. It's issues of. I don't think it's insecurity. I just believe that what I've been through as a child, my because I was always running all yes. around town, yes. so it didn't bother me. So now that I am not doing what I love, ah. everything starts to affect me. Nothing to distract you. So there was nothing to distract my mind and how I feel, my emotions. Cause I'm a very emotional person. I will just have a mental breakdown and I was crying and mm, I feel better and I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So during 2020, every night I cried. And my friend didn't know, and she was actually staying with me. Because I, yes. So Every when did you cry? When I was so sleep? depressed. I was feeling oh, broken shit. badly. Yeah. And I cried every night. I think one night she actually saw me crying. And she was like, she started crying because she didn't know what to do. But I've always told myself that I am strong, you know, and... When I was much younger and things affected me and I cried, I think purses made me feel weak. Gotcha. So. Now it makes complete sense. Now I understand. Now I understand. Okay, more with Sherika on the other side. Now I get it. Because there had to be something. All right, guys, we are back uh, with Sharika. We're talking about 2020 and what a difficult year that was for you. You started uh, therapy that year. And you say one of the things that therapy showed you was that you never really know who you were, right? Yes. So the therapist gave you some homework, <laughs> which you failed. Can you never do your homework? No, I you, never did. You actually, you actually, she gave you two questions. You yeah, chose no. to yeah. only answer one. She gave me two questions. One she gave me was who was Sherika Jackson. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think she asked another question. If I was an animal, what would I be? And I thought about those two questions so much. And, I, and that's when I realized I didn't know who I am. Cause because I couldn't answer who was Sherika Jackson. I sat for days and I thought about it, but I could not answer it. Because all I know is that I'm a little aggressive person who just do track. So who am I off the track? I couldn't tell. Wow. And that's when I knew I was like, I don't even know myself. Ah. <laughs> wow, sure. Yeah. And so which animal were you? Um, I think at first I picked a cougar, I think they're very protective. And then I was like, okay, then find a very aggressive animal. Hmm. And I thought about it so long and hard. I even went on YouTube and I like. <laughs> then I remember when I said it to Coach, and Coach was like, you should have said you. <laughs> and I was like, uh, if I was an animal, and I, and I thought about it and I was like, I just need an aggressive, protective animal mm -hmm. because I'm very aggressive, but I'm still protective. So Of yourself and of your circle? Yes. So the friends you have, how have you been able to, because you, you told me you don't, you just said it, you don't let people in. No. So the friends that you have now, who you say understand you, the ones who are in the WhatsApp group mm -hmm. that you told me about, where when you feel a certain way, you can message them anytime. Yes. How have you managed to attract and hold on to those people? How have they been able to get past that wall? I don't think they have. I what? <laughs> I don't think they have. They, all right. There is one of my friends who I had from I was nine years old, right? Her name is Chantel. I think she understands me the most. But then you have Kelly, where I believe Kelly is my calm spirit. I think if I'm upset, I can just take up my phone and I can call Kelly. And she can tell me any positive things and I like, okay, then I feel better. Where as in Chantel, she, she will try to calm me down. She'll understand and she'll give her input right away. If I'm wrong, she was like, girl, you're wrong. But I think um, 
if I was supposed to get in trouble and call one or two of them, I'd definitely call Kelly because she's a calm one. Mm -hmm. She's a person who I think understands the most and she keep me grounded more. Where Chantel is a clicker. She will go off anytime. So I don't think they totally understand me. Like I don't, I start letting them in a little bit. Because if I have a problem now, I probably take up my phone and I'll be on a mm -hmm. video call mm -hmm. with both of them. So uh, I, I cannot believe. Yes. I have this wall where if I feel like you're getting too close, I'll just cut you off for some time. For absolutely no reason other than you're getting too close. Yes. And you, and you say that's one of the reasons that you have a problem saying the words I love you. You don't yeah. use those words. Honestly, I have not used that word in years. And it, <sighs> growing up, I didn't hear it a lot. I never had that type of, who? Mm -hmm. So it's difficult for you to say it. Yes, you I can, never. You I can show it, but you can't say it. I yeah. can't show it, but I just can't see it. And I think it affects me a lot because a lot of persons don't understand me. Like they don't. <sighs> Do you understand yourself? No. I'm learning. You're learning? I'm learning. Because you said your therapist asked you who you were, you didn't know. But do you feel like having done some therapy that you're closer to finding out who that person is? Yes. And I've, and I've had this conversation with my friends and I said to them, back then I didn't know how to treat you guys because I didn't actually know how to treat them. So therefore I can go days without talking to people and it felt normal. So mm. now I can apologize because mm. I, I, the way how I treated them, like I shut them out, I deal with my problems by myself because that's the only way I knew how to deal with my problems by myself. I didn't have a mother I could run to like, oh, mommy, this is it, or daddy, this is it. No, I spent most of my years on a boarding facility where being around kids, they bring out the worst or the best in you. And most of the times I was high tempo. As mm -hmm. you say anything, I was quick to like fight or something. So I never grew up in a lot of love, you know. I, so therefore I don't know how to show love. I don't. I try to, like when I go to therapy, I understood a little bit more and I'm learning. I'm still learning. Life is a learning process. Life is a school. Definitely. You're just going through the school. What have you learned about yourself? Who is Sharika Jackson? Ah, she's an outspoken person. She's loving and she's very caring. And she's not hard to deal with mm. because I think persons made me felt like I was a hard cracker to deal with. But then I realized I'm this sweet girl, you know? I'm very grounded, I'm strong. Definitely. Pay a therapist. She's doing a fantastic job. Very fantastic job. If she ever hear, well, she's going to hear you, <laughs> but that's amazing. Definitely. That's progress. For sure. And I went there, I went there with my mind so full, like, I am the problem. But then she showed me that I am not. Yeah. Gosh. Powerful. We soon come back with this nice girl, sweet girl, strong girl. <laughs> Self-described. Oh gosh, I love this for you, Cher. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I was just telling this young lady, what a, she's such a lovely spirit, um, and how it's, it's so important for us to give ourselves the gift of happiness, if we can afford to do so, you know, just by allowing yourselves to talk about the things that bother you and get the help that you need. One of the things that has really helped you is you're, you're very big on your relationship with God, very big. 
Um, and you say at one point you felt as if there was a disconnect, like yes. you had plugged out, but you fixed that right quickly. I Tell me a little bit about that history of your relationship with him. Um, when I just moved here, I used, because I grew up in church with my grandma, mm -hmm. right? So, therefore, I, I'm a church girl. <laughs> I probably like going out, but I definitely love going to church, and I think that's something my grandma instilled in me, like, church is a must. Um, when I came here, I met my doctor where I went to his church, and I Going to, I go to church a lot, especially mm -hmm. if I'm in Jamaica, because you know my job, I travel a lot, so therefore sometimes I will go online. But once I'm in Jamaica, I want to go to church. I think it's something that eases my soul and it helps me a lot, especially after a long week of training. But there was a time where I was disconnected with God, like I was praying and I not, it, there was no connection whatsoever. And I was like, no, something is wrong. And when was that? And what do you think was causing that? I don't. It. I don't. It's sometime up in the year, and I honestly don't know. Cause sometimes, whenever there was a time where I was so close to him, and then everything, I felt like the world tumbling down. So therefore, I stopped doing the things I loved the most, and going to church was one of them. Mm -hmm. And then I sat one day and. I cried so hard and I started praying. And I was like, God, this is not it. I, one of my New Year resolutions was to get closer to God. And I wrote that and I worked on it and I felt disconnected still. And I was like, no. And I called my uncle and I said to him, I text him and I said to him, can you keep me in your prayers? And he was like, okay, then I will. Because I don't think I could have done it alone. So therefore, I, cause my, I know my uncle is always praying for me and I call him and I was like, just keep me in your prayers because I'm not feeling myself. I, I have lost touch with God. And I started praying more often. Like I prayed a lot, especially if I leave out my house and I don't pray once I get to training, I'm spending at least five to ten minutes in my car just worshiping before I come out my car and I think that's something that brings me joy at training and I started going back to church like once I'm in Jamaica I started going back to church I got some prayer I even said to doc like pray for me because I'm not feeling myself so I know when I'm not connected to God mm -hmm. and I know when I've lost touch mm -hmm. so and I, I've always said it like you can know the way how you feel and any time I've lost touch with God, I get super emotional. Like, everything starts go bad. My emotions are all over the place. And I think I've worked on it this year a lot, and I felt better once, I, as I said, once I'm in Jamaica, I'm in church. I wanted to go to church before I, I leave, because I think I went before the trials, and I was like, okay, then, this is me. I take mm. my relationship with him very serious. Mm -hmm. I rather to be in church than anywhere else. And I think really? that's, some, yeah, that's something I love the most and I enjoy it. And I have friends that, if, as I said, I think Kelly is one of the main um, persons if I'm feeling like, and I like Kelly, I'm not feeling good. And she, So I, I know, you know, and I think having a relationship with God, it helps me to be happier and more grounded. This year has shown, like, every time you see me, you see me with a bright smile, and I think it's something I enjoy. Trials, you mentioned a while ago. We didn't know you had a mental breakdown yeah. before trials. Like, Cher, we see you on the track, and you look so self-assured, and... But you had a mental breakdown before trials. I had a bad mental breakdown before trials. I was at home, and I was crying. I was supposed to go to UTEC, and magically... Um, my therapist office called me and like, hi, Sharika, we have a, in, um, a space available. Do you want to come? And I was like, yes. And I sat in my car and I'm like, oh, my God, this is God. I was having a soup. And it's not like I, training wasn't going good because training was going good. It's just that I had a mental breakdown. I didn't know the trigger. So when I went to the off, um, my therapist office, I sat there and she was like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I don't know. Magically, I wasn't feeling myself. I don't know what's triggering me. And I happened to get a call from your office. So I think this is a blessing because mm -hmm. I needed to clear my headspace before the trials because I think it was a week away. I was like, okay. 
And I went there and I had a bad mental breakdown in her office. I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried. And I was like, God, thank you. Yeah. Because I think whenever I'm, I'm going to have a mental breakdown, my emotions start troubling me. So you know, you so know I something know, is coming. But I didn't know what the trigger was. Do you know what your trigger is now? Yes. Okay. And I sometimes, sometimes I know, sometimes <clears throat> I don't. And I was like, okay then. Like, re since recently, I, my mental is kind of off a bit. So it's not riding how I want it to. You know what the trigger is for that? So I don't know what the trigger okay. is now. So um, I'm supposed to have a session with her because um, so training soon mm -hmm. starts. So mm -hmm. I just want to have a session where I can clear my head. So I go in training with a positive mental. Absolutely. Yes. And you're still journaling, you write a lot. Write a lot. Um, I got a birthday present from a friend, Janelle, and I think it was one of the best birthday gifts I've ever got. Uh, I think it says a thought of Sherika Jackson, and I think it's, it's of Jackson, and I think it's something she didn't know I appreciated so much because I write. I like expressing myself mm -hmm. through writing, mm -hmm. and during the World Championship, I wrote, I wrote a lot. Like, I was like, okay, then. I, wrote, I started writing on my birthday because I didn't want to public my birthday gift until my birthday. And I think I started writing. And it helps me a lot because I can express myself. I might not express myself to somebody like, okay, then I'm feeling this, but I can write it. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if one day you pick up my book, you're like, oh, she's so strong. You should and publish I, that one day. Yes, definitely. I okay, <laughs> okay. I knew something was in there somewhere. <laughs> All right, Cheryl, I want you to see something and I will come back and talk to you. Go ahead, Laurie. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Greetings, Sharika. What a beautiful smile. And what an amazing journey it has been. And... Oh, what a joy it is to see you receiving so many accolades as millions of people would have witnessed your electrifying performances worldwide. You are truly an amazing person and I admire your unwavering self-belief, your humility, and your steadfast faith in God. The journey continues. Lots of love, as always. Um, I just wanted to send a brief message out to you, um, saying congratulations on your most recent recent success. Um, definitely world champs and national trials. But most importantly, I want to say thanks for being a good friend. Thanks for being always being in our corner. Thanks for always being someone we, someone we can count on. Um, I just wanted to say thanks for keeping us grounded. And yet again, congratulations. God bless you. I am so proud of you and in everything that you have accomplished. Keep shining bright and never, never stop believing in yourself. I love you and appreciate you so much, friend. Just keep on doing that good work you are doing, being that good person you are. Hey, friend. Now, when they asked for this video, I hesitated a little bit because, you know, I'm not one to express myself emotionally, even though I I try to, to tell you as much as possible. Yes, whenever I used to run up and down at Viotech together, whenever I tie your shoes list in the MVP training before, no, I run up and down, I sent on. But we've um, grown into our own dynamic uh, friendship that I honor and cherish so much. Um, I remember days and times when you're going through your own trials and tribulations and you get the slightest inkling in or inclination that I'm going through something and the first thing you do is take up your phone and call or check up because God you're so selfless I'm always telling you that your heart is is the biggest thing or the purest thing that God has blessed you with and because of that you, you don't say blessings yet you understand me like all of your accomplishments and everything that you've gotten so far um, there's more to come um, we'll always be here for each other. I'm gonna tell you already, to the end, like Chucky, all right, I'll forever be here cheering you on. I'll forever be sending you affirmations. Hi, Sharika. I'm here to let you know that you are 
amazing. Not just on the track, but off the track. And I'm so happy to be your friend. Because guess what? I know that you strive to be the best that you can be in everything that you do. And that includes your friendship and your family and everything. You're just amazing overall and you are a warrior. So I can't wait to see what you're going to do next year. You're going to shock the world. You're a warrior, you're a fighter, and I love you, Sherika. Sherika Jackson, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be sharing this moment with you. Honestly, I can remember our journey and how long it, it has been trying to reach where we are right now. I remember in 2017 when we were fat together, we went to World Championship in London and it wasn't all that. But 2021, we really understood what, 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 what life was about and everybody was asking you how we felt. And you were like, Kingsley, I'm okay, I'm okay. And we knew, I knew, listening to your voice, I knew it was that. So we decided to work hard 2022, we decided to work hard 2023. And the world record of 10, yo, Jano. And this is Sherika, yo, I'm proud of you. And it's not just me, it's not just us, it's just MVP and it has been so it has been so wonderful to be a part of the journey. It has been so wonderful for you to call me a friend. It has been so wonderful for us to spend so much time together. Sherika, yo, big man we are yo, we don't know. Jango, Sherika, big up yourself. Hey Sherika, what's up? Just letting you know I better yet. I'm reminding you. How proud I am of you, how, how proud we are of you, me and your whole family, the whole community. Proud, I was very proud of you from day one, from primary school days, when you used to run there, going into high school, running at champs. Like every event you turn up to, it's like you always come out victorious. Would I be first, second, or third? You like you always put on a great performance. So keep winning, keep keep making us proud, keep making yourself proud, keep making your family proud. Yeah? On and off the track, and we will always be here for you. We will always be here to back you, Team Jacko, Team Jamaica, all the time. Yeah, keep doing it. Bless up. My dear friend Sharika, I just want to take this moment to express how immensely proud I am of you. Your hard work, your dedication, and your unwavering determination has gotten you to this point in your life. And I feel so privileged to be witnessing this right now. This is a true testament of your character and your strength. I'm, I feel so privileged to be in your corner, to be your friend. You know, I'm just a phone call away. You know, you have a shoulder to lean on. And you know, I have a listening ear. You have a friend in me, and I have a friend in you. And I'm just happy that I'm seeing you in your element doing what you do. And I couldn't be much prouder. I could not be much prouder. And just remember your strength, your kindness, and resilience inspires me every single day. And no matter what life throws at you, just remember I am in your corner and I believe in you. Keep shining bright. Heart of love. Ooh. Is me going to make Nika quiet with? <laughs> Do the same mess up your makeup? <laughs> try, your, try your best. <sighs> There's mm. people who love you. Just mm. some. I know I know you love to one. One day you're going to be able to tell them individually. What happened? What you feeling? Tell me. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to sound like a therapist, but <laughs> what are you feeling? <laughs> it's too much emotions. Mm -hmm. Emotions are... Uh, uh, mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. There's a lot of love in those tears though, right? Mm. Jesus. <laughs> okay. While well, she calls on Jesus, let me give her a couple of minutes. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> right, welcome back, everybody. Final segment with 
Sharika, I've heard you talk today and I wonder to myself, how do you stay atop your game with all of this stuff that goes on in your head? That's like, that's amazing to me. How do you do that? Um, it was hard. I think it was difficult and sometimes it's still difficult. But with the help of my therapist and I think so many things, you know, and I want to achieve so many mm -hmm. things. During the Olympics, I wanted a 200 medal. I did not make it. And prior to the Olympics, there were so many things that was bothering me mentally. Um, I had friends, you know, I had friends. And I say hard because sometimes you have to know that everybody, I, I don't want to misquote it wrong, everybody is supposed to, some people just are supposed to be a part of the chapter. Like everybody that, right? for a season. Yes. Yeah. I think leading up to the Olympic coach and I made a decision um, that we wanted, he well, he was like, look, you're going to run the 100 and 200, you're going to run the 100 for a place in the four by one. He know what I was capable of. Do, did I know? No. Because I run in the 400. Do I think I going to make a big impact in sprinting? Nah. I was like, he told me that like, because I have not run a lot of 400. I was overweight. I was struggling mentally because it's the year after world um, pandemic. So I was still struggling a little bit mentally, and then I had on so much weight, so I was struggling to run the season. And he was like, look, I'm going to switch it to 100 and 200. He had confidence in me. I didn't have it in myself. And I'm not a person who really doubt myself that mm -hmm. much. But um, I think when I've learned that I was sprinting, person doubted me. Mm -hmm. And I think it bothers me a lot because it's person that I expect to, to believe in me because I believed in them. Yes, so if you come to me and say, I believe I agree run um, super fast today, even if I know you can't do it, I'm not going to doubt you because you are capable of anything. Or I literally tell you that you're not going to be able to do exactly. it, which some of them did. And I think they did, and yeah. I think it bothers me a lot because you don't get a medal or make a team until you show up at the line. And to have persons doubted me that they don't think I would have make it in the sprinting and whosoever athletes are there. I am aware of all the sprinters. I may not sprint, but I was aware of everybody who was there. I went to coach and I was like, I'm not going to run this 100 and 200 because I'm not going to make it. And for me to doubt myself that much, I think that hurts me a lot because I am a firm believer in myself. Mm -hmm. No matter if I think I'm not going to run good, I'm mm -hmm. telling myself I'm going mm -hmm. to do it. And I had friends who doubted me and it affected me mentally. Like I went to coach and I was like, I'm not running this event because I'm not going to make it. Remember, I didn't even, it was a child's coming up. I, ha I am aware who is run for Jamaica <laughs> and I'm aware of all the sprinters in the world. Listen. So I had, somebody who I believed in or more than one person who I believed in and they doubt me. So when I went to the Olympic, it was something I wanted to do because I had a point to prove. Yes. I got a medal in the 100 years, my first time running 100 years. I was super excited. I was a part of history, but that wasn't my main goal. Yes. The 200 came and I never made it past the first round. So many emotions took me over. I never, I, so many things. Yeah, because you, you thought to yourself that the naysayers were right, Chirika, but here you sit today. <laughs> here you sit today, despite all that. We have to wrap. But you're saying today, as you sit here, you are experiencing a peace you've never felt yes. before. So you're in a good place. You know, you're not looking at Olympics yet. You're not right, not <laughs> done. You're not manifest nothing. You're just in this moment. In this moment. Enjoying this piece. Enjoying it. And we are glad for you and for that. Definitely. And we pray for a whole lot more of it for you. Thank you. So you're doing some good work on yourself, girl. Keep going. Thank you. What a joy to talk to you today. See? <laughs> Wasn't so bad, was it? No. Okay, great. All right, let's wrap. It's time for our affirmation, everybody.
Sometimes I wish the show was three hours long. So this race called life can be so tiring and sometimes it feels like a distance run and sometimes it feels like a sprint. Some days we execute flawlessly. And then others, it's as if we've never trained. Injuries, heartbreak, disappointment. Running never ending laps. Curves that twist us up and straights that leave us lean. Sometimes folks are out here pulling muscles we never even knew we had. <laughs> but having to stretch others we never knew existed. But it's important for us to remember, we have a master coach who has given us the techniques we need for all of us to run the race, but each of us at our own pace. And to remember that with all the lanes to the left and to the right, we only need to focus on our own, never forgetting that we're not alone. With each push, pull, wince, and Grimace, just keep going diligently as long as we finish. Tonight we affirm, I will run life's race with endurance, for it is not for the swift. That's our soul food and our show for this evening. Thank you for watching. We are back next week with another story of the power of the human spirit. Until then, every blessing, everybody. Please remember to count your blessings. So, so, so important.